So since I'm teaching from scratch, what does it mean? I'll be teaching you Linux operating system from there to the cloud application deployment. So the only thing is you have to concentrate and practice what are the tasks I've given and replicate the whatever I've teached in the session and read the documents what I've shared. So this is enough for you to clear the interviews and get a job in this particular domain. So effort is needed. It's not that the only person have to teach and you have to listen and forget about it. But only when you practice practically, you will uh, that particular topic will register in your mind and you can sustain in this IT industry for longer period if you are good at the basics level. So I'm teaching from the basics to the high end level of application deployment. But before that, I just want to test your where you are, you people are right now. So to understand that, I want to ask you a few questions related to anything that you know in the list of the topics. First one, uh, does anyone know what is meant by information technology? We are talking about ID right now. So what is information technology is all about? A simple layman language where everybody can understand. Anyone? So no need to feel shy. Whatever you know, you can talk. Or what is meant by website? Or what is meant by operating system? Or what is meant by network? And what is meant by internet? Or cloud computing? Do you know any answers for these questions? This is no way related to our subject right now. But these are important. These are like fundamentals. Any answers to any one of them? Okay. So let me try to explain about this. What is information technology? For example, the information technology is all about how will you transfer the data? How will you store the data? So the thing that you develop, which will transfer the data, which will store the data, or which will visualize the data is called as information technology. Okay, the mobile phones, what you're seeing, the smart TVs, mobiles, or a smart TV is what I've told. Okay, and other things, what you do, the calls, what you make, all this is like information, right? You're talking to someone in the sense what you're sharing the information. What kind of information it is getting shared? That is unnecessary for us to know. What is information technology? The technology that is developed to transfer the information, to store the information, or to visualize the information is called as information technology and a simple layman language. What is meant by website? For example, I want to start up a company, maybe e-com website or e-learning portal or maybe some restaurant or let's say any food business or something like that. I want to uh, start my business. So if I need to promote my business to reach my customers, I have to provide a website where they can order the food or they can see the information of my restaurant. So I need to provide a website to them. So what is a website? Website is a combination of web pages. What is a web page? You might be seeing your Flipkart, Amazon, all these are websites. Your Facebook, WhatsApp, all these are like websites. Okay. Now, every website will have multiple web pages. What is meant by web page? The web page will store some information. It could be video format, audio format, image format, or a text format. We will see only these four, right? Okay. So, either we will see a video or we will see an image, or we will see a text, or we will see some particular uh, audio as well. So these are the data which I will try to showcase in that particular page. So website is a combination of all these pages. Okay, so that is a website. What is meant by operating system? For example, you take your laptop, which has Windows operating system. You take your mobile, which has Android operating system or iOS operating system. You take smart TV, it has some operating system. So why we need this operating system? Because if I need to interact with the hardware, hardware in the sense what, the CPU, memory, hard disk, motherboard, all these things. If I need to talk to them, as a human being, I know certain language, maybe my mother tongue or common language like English. As a, that is called as human readable language. But what your hardware can understand, only binary language, like ones and zeros combination, right? So I need someone who will convey this particular human readable language into machine level language. And what are the machine level languages giving the information that has to be converted into human readable language? Who will do that particular task? Operating system. 
that's the reason why we are using it okay and what is meant by network for example you have devices at your home obviously everybody has router at your home and you are connecting your mobile devices smart tvs laptops pcs tabs printer many devices at your home and one device will have one ip address forget about that now these devices wants to talk to each other they are not a human beings right so if a device wants to talk to each other they need a network so network will help to connect the devices to transform the data from one system to another system that is a reason why we need to have a network to connect the devices and to transfer the data okay that is called as network we call it as social networking we use facebook to what to connect our friends and relatives right to talk to each other so that is called as social networking so network is all about connecting the devices or systems to communicate with each other okay what is meant by internet does anyone know this this is a common terminology is what we are hearing on daily basis and not teaching us something new information technology website operating system network all these are known terminologies for us we are hearing on daily basis finally what is internet no answers okay internet is all about connecting the networks across the geographical locations is called as internet you have one network here let us say you have a device which is sitting somewhere else in the geographical location i want to talk to them so what you need to have internet connection if i have internet connection you can communicate to any person or any device from anywhere in the geographical location for that we need an internet connection okay then finally what is cloud computing the subject what we are learning today is all about cloud computing does anyone know what is meant by cloud computing at least an answer for this see if you don't uh, answer something you cannot know how to answer in interview as well so get habituated to talk to the people from here itself don't feel shy what other person will think he doesn't know who you are right you are sitting somewhere else okay so don't feel shy what are the sentence you are forming to explain that concept and all cloud computing is somewhere like uh, connecting remotely all the data and applications and all yeah so providing which is virtually internet mm. right yeah yes so providing the on demand it resources over the internet is called as cloud computing for example i'll give you one simple example let's say earlier see for example if i need to uh, watch some particular topic i need to go to the seminars i have to attend for example take the colleges or the graduation or post graduation or maybe intermediate nowadays in schools as well in the covid time for example i'm saying the pandemic we we don't have a choice to go to the uh, office uh, let's say schools and colleges and all then what is the solution we have online teaching right because of online teaching what we have we are able to sit at our home and we are able to watch the videos what teachers are teaching right okay so that is able to reach me how is it possible they are recording the sessions and they are uploading somewhere and that service i am using it over the internet right so that particular story they are uploading some video in some website and i am accessing that website from my location that is one cloud computing okay you take anything storage servers network there are many other things websites applications softwares all this comes under cloud computing so providing on demand it resources over the internet is called as cloud computing okay so why i'm asking you this questions is but nothing but to understand how good we are at fundamentals okay though you know know the topic uh, but we can explain them that's the only problem what is this completely related to from cloud computing or devsecops this one devsecops i just told you that cloud computing is a baseline for us right okay so can you explain like uh, what is cloud computing and the difference between devsecops is it relatable or there is a difference in both no, it's related but see cloud computing is a platform see aws is okay. a one cloud computing right azure is one cloud computing alibaba cloud is one cloud computing in that you are using devsecops okay so you are using some services to create a devsecops solution for your organization like automation okay. testing or let's say scanning all this we will do that that doing that particular task is called as devsecops so devsecops is not a tool it's a culture that we adopt 
to do our development, testing, and uh, operations. Okay, by automating the process. That is all about DevSecOps. To do this particular DevSecOps solutions, we are using cloud computing. Nothing but AWS, Azure, GCP, Alibaba Cloud, IBM Cloud, on-premises. Okay, some companies will not use any cloud, right? They use on-premises environment. Okay, it depends upon them. Okay, now let us understand few topics about in the DevSecOps culture, right? So we have development plus security plus operations. DevOps in the sense for development plus operations. Security is a different part earlier. Now, even security was integrated as part of DevOps. Why? Because we need to automate the process of doing security checks as well. It could be infra level security, platform level security, network level security, application level security, or software level security. Security would be anywhere, right? Okay, how will you protect your data? or information is all about security. Now we have to find, as a DevSecOps engineer, I have to find out a tool which will do the security checks in the network level or in the infra level or in the software level or application level. And that I have to integrate it to my automation. Nothing should be done manually. See, DevOps or DevSecOps, nothing should be done manually, right? Everything should be automated. That is what we are going to learn in this particular training program. How will you automate the process by using different tools like Ansible, Terraform, Shell Scripting, all this, right? The Jenkins or any other CI/CD pipelines or Git. So by learning these particular tools, we will try to create a solution as part of DevSecOps for your organization. That is what we are learning in this entire training program. And we will come across different services and different tools that I will list down one by one. Now, what are the prerequisites? If I need to be a AWS DevSecOps engineer, what are the prerequisites I need to learn? I'm not telling you that you have to have the knowledge. What I will be teaching you before entering into the DevSecOps of AWS. First, we need to learn any Linux operating system. You might ask me a question saying that why you are choosing only Linux? Why don't we use uh, sorry, uh, Windows or Mac or Unix? Linux is an open source, first answer to it. Since it is an open source, we are not using it. Second thing is nothing but it is more secured in the operating system level when you compare with Windows and any other operating system. Third thing is nothing but many of the organizations are running their applications on Linux operating system. So if many people are using, what does it mean? I have a better opportunity, okay? For these three reasons, we are learning Linux operating system. For now, I will tell you only this, since it is a demo. In the Linux, we have many flavors. Red Hat, CentOS, Ubuntu, Debian, OpenSUSE, Fedora, Linux Mint. There are many options like that. Now you might ask me a question saying that, do I need to learn all these flavors? Not necessary. That doesn't make any sense as well. As a human being, we cannot learn all these operating systems, right? We need to pick any one of them from Linux. We will be using Ubuntu. Why? Because Ubuntu is a easy to use. For a new guys, it is e comfortable to understand the Linux operating system. Not only that, many organizations are using it as part of open source. We don't need to purchase any license key to use an Ubuntu operating system. So obviously, many of the organizations will try to use it. And again, since it is not since it is open source, we are not using it. It is more secure and it is reliable. That's the reason why we are using Ubuntu operating system. In this Ubuntu, again, we have different versions like 21, 22, 23, 24, 18, 16, 17, 19, like that. In that, we have to use only even numbers. Right now, the latest version of Ubuntu is 24.04. I've written here 22, but here uh, the latest one, what we have as of today is 24.04. That is an even number. Okay, and it is LTS, means what? Long-term support. If I use this operating system of Ubuntu with this 24 version, five years, it is a standard support. What Ubuntu community will give to us? Means any bug fixes, any, any new functionalities, all the things will be released in this five years. They'll provide a support. Another five years for a few customers, they will provide extended support. 
So totally how many years we have? 10 years. What does it mean? As an administrator, until 10 years, I don't need to worry about upgrading the operating system. That's a benefit what we have. So I can use that operating system version for 10 years, at least minimum five years. As a, until five years, my administrator no need to worry about upgrading the operating system. Upgrading is not th th that easy task. We have to see whether your existing software is comfortable or not, whether the tools what you're using are reliable or not, whether we can install it or not, will there be any dependency issue? We have to find out all these things. That is part of testing. Okay, in the development or in the testing phase, we will do this. Then we will go to the production. Okay, so I'm saying you that we have to pick one Linux family from operating system side. Once we learn that of this operating system like commands, not the pure administration, what I will be teaching you, what are necessary as part of DevSecOps engineer, I'll be teaching you that. Like Linux commands, like 40 to 50 commands, and then uh, disk management, user management, permissions, and ownership. These are the five topics what I will be teaching you as part of this Linux operating system in this Ubuntu. Okay, after that is done, I'll be teaching you shell scripting. One scripting language is mandated. If you're using Linux, it is called a shell scripting. If you are going with Windows, it is called as PowerShell. Simple. If you want to automate the process in your operating system, okay, we have to learn one scripting language that will simplify your job and it will automate the process. That's the reason why shell scripting is mandated. We have to learn about it. We can't skip that, okay? And in this training program, we are not going to teach you any programming language. We are teaching you only a shell scripting. Scripting is different, programming language is different. So when I come across that topic, I will explain you what is the basic difference between them, okay? Now, after these prerequisites are done, now we will enter into AWS. In the AWS, what are the services I'm going to teach as part of administration? We need to talk about IAM, which comes under authentication authorization. I cannot explain you more than this, I'll tell you what are the services we are going to teach in this training program, list by list. So this IAM service, it comes under authentication authorization. And then we need to learn about EC2, which comes under compute. And then networking, VPC. And then followed by storages, EBS, Elastic File System, and S3 Bucket. These three services comes under storage part. One is authentication authorization, compute, networking, and then storage. After these services are done, we need to learn about load balancer. How to send the traffic to your backend servers? How will you reduce the load of the traffic on your backend servers? It all depends upon the load balancer. You take Netflix, any website right now, Netflix, the Hotstar, uh -huh, uh, Flipkart, Amazon, Facebook, all this, definitely they will use a load balancer. Okay, your request is not sending to the server directly. First, your request will go to the load balancer. In the backend, we will have a lot of servers. Your request will go to any one of the server to serve the data. Okay, that is the major purpose of using load balancer. In AWS, it is called as elastic load balancer. And then auto scaling group. And then we have SNS, simple notification service. If you want to send any notifications when you configure something from AWS side, we have to use SNS. And then ECR, ECR, ECS, EKS. These three topics comes under containerization technology. You might have heard so many, so many things about Docker and Kubernetes, right? So these three topics comes under that, which is so important for your career. If you want to be in the up to mark in the IT industry, and if you want to get a job, Kubernetes, Docker, Kubernetes, and this containerization technology is so important for you to learn. Okay, containerization technology. Under that particular part, we have many tools. Docker and Kubernetes is most widely used. And in AWS, we have services for that. One is ECR, one is ECS, and one is EKS. ECR stands for Elastic Container Registry. ECS stands for Elastic Compute Service. And EKS stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service. These are the three services what we have to learn. And it is so important. If you want, you can talk to your relatives who are working in IT industry or if your friends and tell them that these guys are training this one, is it so important for your career? Obviously, they will say yes, okay? And next one, Lambda service, which comes under serverless architecture for to do certain actions in AWS. 
but it is a serverless architecture okay if you want your serverless architecture to do certain actions in your aws then we have to go for lambda servers and then we have route 53 which comes under dns and then cloud friend for a content delivery network and a certificate manager for example you might have seen some websites you will see https what is that some browsers if you see almost all the websites you will see https what does it mean does anyone know what is it you might be doing shopping in your flipkart amazon right you will see there as well or your banking websites https transfer protocol something like that so what does it mean you're trying to store your sensitive data in the website and you are trying to transfer data for example flipkart i'll do some online payment you will enter your credit card debit card details and all and you will try to do some payment the data which is getting transferred from your device to that particular target server everything has to be encrypted everything has to be encrypted so when it will get encrypted only when the server side they are using a certificate when you don't see a certificate for a website you should not do any transactions not at all okay so always you have to see your website whatever you are trying to do some payment gateways and all you have to see whether the website is secure or not by seeing https what the guys will do they will purchase a certificate that certificates if you want to purchase in aws we have amazon certificate manager what we can use and then followed by backup for example i want to take some backups of my data some services what i'm creating in aws i want to take a regular backup at the time we have a service called aws backup and then we have transfer family or we can call it as data sync for example in your local system or any other cloud we have some data that i want to migrate it to my aws to transfer the data from one system to another system or from one cloud to another cloud or from my local system to the cloud at the time we can use a service called transfer family or data sync any one of them and then we need to learn about cloud trail and cloud watch these two comes under monitoring one is auditing service and one is monitoring service for aws for example what are the services you are trying to create on aws i have to know what is the status of them are they running or not are the resources are running with my expected uh, requirements or not i have to monitor and what people are doing on my aws account i have to track them as well for that we have to use cloud trail to monitor the services we have to use cloud watch those are internal monitoring services auditing services for your aws okay apart from that we need to learn about secrets manager to store some sensitive data in aws and then system manager even that also does the same thing and then we have cloud shell so for example if i want to interact with my aws and if i want to run some commands to talk to the aws we can use cloud shell and then we have code commit which comes under git and we have rds relational database service i'll be teaching you what is it and then we have prometheus which comes under kubernetes monitoring and then we will be learning about after this is done in docker and kubernetes i'll be teaching you all these particular topics i cannot tell you what are those one by one because it is a time consuming and you will not understand that without learning the fundamentals but this is the data what i have right now what i'm going to teach you in my docker and kubernetes topics the one what i told you you have to concentrate more on this particular topics for sure you cannot skip them okay so after learning aws services as part of docker and kubernetes i'll be teaching you these topics as well now once this particular training was done on this particular topic what i have to learn next as part of devops now we need to learn some services which doesn't belong to aws but those comes under devops what are those first one is jenkins for ci cd continuous integration and continuous delivery or we can call it as deployment i'll explain you what is that with some example later but jenkins is one of the tool what we are going to use which is an open source tool as part of ci cd and then we will be using prometheus and grafana for kts for monitoring and then version control system like git and then ansible for automation process for example if i have multiple servers on that server i want to deploy something or i need to configure something 
at the time we have to use ansible we have puppet we have self we have solve stack and all but ansible is a preferred one why because it is easy to use and easy to manage that's the reason why we are using ansible and then terraform which is so important for your career nowadays everybody is asking you terraform if you don't learn this that will affect your career as well so docker and kubernetes and terraform will sustain you for longer period from now onwards whether you take any technology terraform is the most important because if you want to manage your infrastructure on aws or any other cloud terraform is a common solution what we have and then i'll be teaching you sonar cube as part of uh, code testing for example you will write a code but i need to scan that code and see how many how much of duplicate code you have written okay do we have any bugs do we have any code smells i need to identify them though i am a senior developer for example i cannot read each and every line what you have written i need some particular tool who will scan your code that is called as static code analysis that will be done by sonar cube so we will be using sonar cube as well as part of static code analysis okay what are the code it is i will be using node js you can pick any other code okay as part of the static code once it is done now as part of devsecops we are talking about not only devops right security as well as part of security apart from aws services i'll be teaching you trivi tool docker csi benchmark testing cube bench and cube linter these are the tools what we are going to teach as part of security see i'm tell i'm not telling you that these are the only four services what i'm teaching as part of security no we are using sonar cube as well if you see the previous slide that is part of security we'll be learning aws vpc as well in that we will be learning about firewall network security group vpn we are peering connection transit gateway all this comes under security that is network level security okay these are platform level security this is to scan your software or let us say just a second there is a mouse yeah this particular tool is to scan your images in the docker and kubernetes technology this one is to scan your kubernetes platform platform level security this is application level security platform level security network level security we will be learning terraform we will be learning infra level uh, security so everywhere i am covering all the security parts okay and once it is done always i will give you a task you if you want you can contact my previous batch as well if you know anyone ask them for every to or topic i will give you one task for example i will show you one classroom what i used to do for all of the people in the batch i used to share the documents from here for example if you take any one of them this is the current running batch i'll give you the tasks i think for this batch have not given i guess yeah no for them have to. let me just show you you can see i'll give the task assignments we call it as okay in the google classroom i will share all the documents what are the topic i'm discussing right i'll share the documents from here so this is our point of contact for all the documents you don't need to worry about preparing the documents you have to listen to the topics what i'm teaching and try to practice it and try to complete the task what i have given that is sufficient and in each and every topic i will be discussing the interview questions as well okay so these are the things what i will do and i have my documents as well like ppt is what i have shown you right now github documents as well everything i will share what documents links everything so you guys have to concentrate and i will tell you how to practice aws by creating a free account for one year okay everything you can practice on your local system you don't need to purchase a new laptop for this if with your existing laptop we can practice linux operating system without deleting your windows operating system we can practice on linux operating system as well i'll tell you all these things how to set up how to configure practical sessions i will take care of it whatever i do try to replicate that and try to complete that task what i have given that is the only thing what you have to do okay if you are not going to do that and if you ask me the questions i am not going to answer that is straight forward answer no hidden things in that okay so practice is so important now these are the sample diagrams what i am showing you right now 
with the task what i'm going to give we are terraform let us say aws with some services what i've teached see individually you have to learn all the services but all together you have to integrate them after learning all the topics you have to integrate them to create a final solution by using terraform or you can look at this architecture with the sonar cube and jenkins how to scan the code how to build the infra by using terraform all these things finally our project will be on this one the light project architecture is all about this the light project i will be teaching you we have a recorded session as well i'll be sharing you that recorded session but the only problem is i cannot share you the code because the code is related to visual path it is a copyright so we cannot share the code but i'll tell you how the live application will be developed and it will be deployed including automation by using terraform we have to build the infra by using github actions and jenkins we have to deploy the application how we are going to do that everything i will show you from scratch with all the services what we have learned so first you need to concentrate on the services what i am teaching then you can worry about or you can think about the application deployment that is a live application of visual path that is ksengineers.com the website name is ksengineers.com this particular website i will show you how to deploy from scratch so this is a live project it is a live application many people are using this okay this particular website we have designed only to teach docker and kubernetes if you are really interested to learn only docker and kubernetes in detail whether you might be a software developer or operating system administrator devops engineer devsecops engineer cloud engineer sdet engineer sre engineer or live projects on docker and kubernetes you can purchase this the entire platform is for four triple nine i guess 5000 rupees enter all the courses you will get all the projects okay if you want to purchase only one it is one triple nine i'm not promoting anything just i'm giving this information if someone is interested now this application we are going to deploy as part of our training okay any questions so the code which you are telling which should be with the uh, usual path so yes. that is some code which we are deploying like software uh, code or something like that yes. right what i'm talking, talking about kate is in case right Yes. So yes, well, that is nowhere required to be learned. For software developers, what are the topics are needed? I have teach them and I have given here. For example, I'll show you. For example, you are a software developer. You don't need to learn everything, but what is necessary for you? Those topics I have written here. As a software developer, I want to learn how to deploy Python Django on Docker Compose. You can see here. This is one project. This is another project like that. So, can you know, I can read into this? Yes, yes, yes. And uh, see, you ask for this. For this, the mandate thing is you need to be a little bit knowledge on Linux operating system. A little bit. Okay. Yeah. So Linux operating system, uh, there are you know, n number of players. Okay. Like uh, different. But one of the operating system is fine. Any one of the family is fine. Okay. You can learn either Red Hat, CentOS, or Debian, or Ubuntu. At least one. Any coding language which is uh, which would be required or at any basic level? See, it is up to you. So my question is like you know um, I'm okay with the services that you talked about, but the okay. tools like you said about yeah. like, um, CI/CD, Ansible, Jenkins, and um, these tools. Yes. Right? So will you be deep dive into those sessions or will you be like you know just? It's not for namesake actually. What are the tools I've written? What are the services I've written? I have to teach each and every sub topics in detail. If I teach only what is Jenkins and write one simple pipeline and done, there is no point of teaching this. Right? That's reason it will take for me three months. If not, I can complete in two months. Okay. 